quite interesting. So, ano yung, what's that collection behind you? It's my Parkermill collection that I started collecting in 1986 when I traveled to Italy to study for the first time. And okay. I found, especially because I spent a lot of time in Milan after that, a lot of the, of the industrial design companies had really beautiful, unique pepper mills. So uh, I started my collection and Shepard, they're the traditional ones, like like those big ones na uh, typical, uh, diba? But there are so many na super unique like this, look, ah, actually. Uh, Empire State Building and Chrysler <laughs> Building. Wow. <laughs> Only the Italians can do this, so <laughs> super unique. And then, siempre I have pencils, ganon, di ba? Ah, that's cute. Ah, super galing. cute. Super cute talaga. The others, wait, I'll get up. I have to show you one. Sobrang cute. Uh, yung yung red. Ani yung may red na ano dot? Parang clown. Lang, it's just a, a a very modern ganon, no? It looks oh, like a clown actually. Uh, pang clown daw, pang clown. Uh, <laughs> oh, but look at this one. This is my shark. Ah, uh, ano yan? Shark, and when you spin the tail, the pepper comes out in the mouth. Wow. Oh, <laughs> Pag naubusan kami ng ano, paminta, punta kami oh. dyan. <laughs> and then, I have ano, I have, wait ah. There's one super interesting, but wala siya dito. Binenta na. Nabenta na. No, hindi. <laughs> Ang doon sa kabilang wall. I'll wait ah. Oo, <laughs> sige. <laughs> Ganda, no? Paper me? No, I didn't people, when they find out about my collection, they make me regalo salt and pepper shakers. But I keep telling them it's not salt and pepper shakers. It's pepper mills. So this one's super interesting. It's the it's the silhouette of a woman, diba? Uh... <laughs> Italian okay. And then, this one, my son made pasalubong to me when he was in college. I don't know where he found it. It's a nose. <laughs> 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 so the pepper comes out of the nostrils. <laughs> so it's my ano. And actually, when I started the collection, my intention talaga, pakabumahin ako ha, was, um, was really to display it when I opened my fine dining restaurant. So when I opened Chibo in 1997, I knew that was not the restaurant where the pepper mills would be. So okay. finally, when I opened Pepato, which means with oh. pepper, diba, or peppered, yes, oh. of course, that was the perfect place for it. So this is the collection, part of the collection that was there, but since then, I've still been continuing to collect pag unique. Kasi dami ng pepper mills, diba? But if it's oh, not unique, I won't buy it anymore. Sa Philippines, may mga ganyan? Oh, yeah, no, naman. There's some, I have some that are locally made. The, uh, there's this. This is bamboo, and this is a gift to me by Sina Angelo. When we all uh, worked together, yeah, they gave it to me one, ano, one birthday. Then they uh, all. It's, it's ano, it's wood, it's great. Board, but they they shape it uh, like a bamboo trunk. Uh, oh. <laughs> and then there are other woodworkers who are making very interesting pepper mills. Like sina, the people that own Mars Woodcrafts. Sina, oh. Mara Sebastian, they're super galing. I use their wooden boards and stuff. And they make beautiful pepper mills from Philippine wood. Super interesting. Wow, galing ah. Okay, let's start. Siguro. Uh, okay, with the topic. All right. All right. All right. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Hi. guys. Hi. Hi. Hello, I'm Ron and Ray. Thank you yeah. for having me this afternoon. 
Yeah, we'll have a discussion. So good afternoon also to all the people watching in the replay or watching live now. Uh, you can join our discussions if you have comments or suggestions or, or you just want to comment. Um, shout out. And shout out. <laughs> okay. uh, but we're talking to uh, Chef Mar- Margarita Forrest on what's happening now. no? And uh, we wanted to learn. And I guess a lot of people want to learn on how can we bounce forward from all this crisis. Uh, so maybe, uh, Chef, um, siguro, uh, let's start with restaurant dining. What happened yeah. um, now with your restaurants? Are they open for takeout? And what's the latest? Well, actually, um, all of our restaurants are, are reopened. No, So Chibo, for example, the 16 branches, we opened all of them already, although some of them are a bit slow, especially the new ones that we just opened before pre-COVID. But we decided that um, I guess the the more locations we're at, at least we can gauge uh, where where we're doing okay and and where um, we should stay open. And we're still looking um, in the future. I mean to see. Um, if we should streamline or not. But in the meantime, we're just reopening all the locations since we invested in all of them so much and we also want to be in as many locations as possible. So. Yeah. And um, so, kamusta naman? Are the mall areas working well now? Or well, how's the traffic? It was, it was a, a real slow start for everybody. But um, I think... Um, True to form, the the locations that have always been super busy are the ones that are still performing the best, no? And it's really our locations that have common areas in the mall. I think Mm -hmm. that maybe because it's not an enclosed space, people don't feel as worried um, about coming to a restaurant. And they also, I guess, miss that whole experience of eating a chibo in a... In, in the center of the mall. So um, our, our branches, for example, like in Shangri-La, in, in Rockwell on the third floor, and also at um, at uh, Magnolia, no? Robinson's Magnolia. Those are, those are our biggest branches and they're the ones that are doing very well. The others that are medyo parang half open, like Greenbelt and Glorietta, they're also picking up um, quite strongly. Um, of course, we know how the foot traffic is in those two malls. So mm-hmm. those, those are also doing very well. SM Aura is a small branch, but we're also um, doing doing very well because the the mall is also um, very proactive, no, with advertising how um, how they're keeping the mall safe. And I guess the the tenants, you know, in in in. Uh, in those malls are also pulled up, no, and and are supported performance. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and kamo sa naman take out. So what happened with the dynamics of takeout? And- well, yeah, in the beginning, diba, all we did was was take out and delivery, mm-hmm. and that was like um, also kind of like a, a we we needed to take a big effort to get ourselves out there, because everybody's um, just using uh, social media, Instagram and Facebook to get their, 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 um, their you know, the reach out there, no? And we've mm-hmm. had to, to really um, concentrate on that. And alam mo naman, my age group is medyo older na, not even supposed to be out of the house because I'm senior na ako. But <laughs> yeah, the techie stuff, you know, I, I, we have to keep abreast with it, no? So, for example, with Chibo, we just launched our one number from, um, oh. you know, uh, yeah, through a call center that that um, that is uh, running out of Kubao. And mm-hmm. uh, we have a number now that you can call. It's, mm-hmm. it's, not, it's 8891-1111, and you just dial that number and... We'll, we can take your orders from any of the branches. Whatever's closest to you is the branch that will deliver to you. Wow. So, we've to, yeah, we've had to, re, to kind of resort to things like that. Our website is also up, so you can also do online orders on our website. Mm-hmm. And um, it's a slow start, but people are getting used to it now. We just launched the phone number actually, mga, actually less than a week pa lang. 
So, you know, we're, we're still fine tuning it, but our agents are there to answer. I, I, I'm also the one I say, hi, it's Margarita. You know, when you call, <laughs> so, totoo, totoo ba yan? <laughs> you try dialing it after the show. <laughs> and, and it's, um, it's a, it's a nice way to reach out to our market that, you know, is actually not so close to our, our physical locations. And, uh-huh. Also, our riders are made up of most of our service staff, all our front of house. Oh, people. Nice. oh kasi, syempre, dining is limited to just 30% allowable oh. um, by, by the government rules. So, of course, our dining staff, you know, we need to trim, trim them down at the restaurant. So, mm-hmm. the rest of them are volunteered with their motorcycles um, to do the deliveries. And mm-hmm. um, so, our, our actually our delivery brand is called Chibo Rapido, which means fast food, no? So oh. it's it's also um, we're we're pushing the, the 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 brand so that people get used to to the idea of uh, Chibo being delivered to your home. Oh, I have a question. Um, I know uh, it's actually exciting for the food scene now because there's a lot of home-based food also, diba? Yeah. Uh, and I know you also would sell home-based food. Um, yes, yes, I'm and- doing that now. I'm cooking in the house and putting <laughs> it in the in the 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 kind of like the repertoire of the the catering orders as well as Grace Park because actually so, most of those home dishes like my cadios with the cotequino the the river the river eel from bago all of that was being cooked here in the house and i would send it to grace park even the cassava cake and okay. the avocado pie so mm-hmm. um, i think that people appreciate the fact that it does come straight from my home kitchen Uh-oh. and um it, it's also apart from from that being like a, a new part of our business i think what's really interesting for the whole industry since I think that the the only way to go now is to help each other, is to see all the the home cooks who are doing amazing things out of their homes, no? And uh-uh. it's also nice to see their range of the prices. You can go from not so expensive to very expensive. But it's nice that home chefs now are um, becoming more famous because of the of the lockdown. And it's oh. interesting. It's keeping the, the the competition interesting, and then uh-huh. it's also no, it's also um, kind of like a new part of the industry now. All the home the home cooks who are are doing uh-huh. delivery from their places. Yeah, oh, and I think uh, it will be will it will continue, no? Because yeah, a lot of people will appreciate it already, and. Uh, but also, don't you think it will be competition with the restaurants then? Diba? Of course, it's already competition with the restaurants. But I think that it's also keeping the industry vibrant because people are also looking at their neighborhoods to source. Diba? People don't want food that maybe that travels too much from far away to get to them. So they'll go three houses down because Mrs. X is cooking a, a really nice crab with sotangon or something, di ba? But it, it's it's an awe. It's, it's also an, a, another blessing that comes out of a crisis. Um, a lot of uh, super micro entrepreneurs are, are really getting a break. Um, yeah. People that, you know, who probably got furloughed or whatever are just staying home or 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 are you know not not being able to get out of their houses to get to work they're also starting their own small things and and that's that's keeping things very interesting oh and um maybe you can you share that now, eh? you were doing that now with your food fairs before all the whole oh. thing. So, <laughs> parang carry over na to over. That next level, actually. Allowing it to get carried over. Uh, um, question. Maybe do you have some tips to those nga, I'm sure a lot of people will watch it even in the replay. Yung mga people who will be selling at home, uh, what were the important things? Uh, is it packaging ba? Is it hot? Yeah, or one, one, yeah, one very important thing is packaging. And then perhaps they can also stress test their, their products before they actually put it on the market on like how does it travel well um 
there there's there are some people that are that are um um doing much better because they put um reheating or preparation instructions in in their food packaging um and i i think also innovation no people are doing new things i mean if i can mention something like something like pares right i mean it's such a simple home cooked wow. dish that you get in your neighborhood diba pares is a neighborhood dish and somebody decides to use angus beef to make pares i think that that's a uh, that's a really nice innovation diba and uh -huh. then i think with also with the with the home delivery things um people get are always looking for something new so don't yes. feel bad if you started one product and then all of a sudden the sales drops that's because people have found new things so it also encourages you to do something new again diba? Creative, diba? to think but out of the box they're waiting for you, you to do something <laughs> Everybody's always looking for something new. So that's also, um, in itself, it could be a, a weakness and also a blessing. Diba? Kasi parang, oh, shucks, my whatever, my, uh -uh. I don't know, you know, your Uwe Pandasal was selling a hundred packs, you know, uh -uh. a week before, and now it's down to like 30. What can you do uh -uh. again? So you make a new version. You put Ube with <laughs> chocolate or something you know? and that's what's uh, happening people are it's so nice every week you'll see something new from something uh -oh. um um magaling ah. well did you uh find any like category that are selling well sa home base like uh kasi parang napapansin namin desserts and snacks are doing well it's or is bread there... breads and ano and um things that travel well or Something like sushi bake, can you imagine? Who would have thought? No, I'm dying for Asian. Taking the market by storm, grab it, the buying sushi. Oh. <laughs> Grabbing it. Akala namin hagan lockdown lang eh. Uh, it continues, ha? Huh? Wow. Yeah. December yeah, Interesting, the ba? Or the other day, I saw something nacho bake. So. Oh. Even with the Mexican, everyone's being creative. Um, then there are people doing, wow, I saw something super interesting, Moroccan pastels in like oh. a rectangular baked dishes. It was Alicia who posted it in one of the Viber groups, no? Uh -oh. That's the other thing. The Viber group is now the new way to sell your stuff. Yeah. So, community. Oh, oh, the community Viber groups. Um, of course, you can get overwhelmed by like, you know, everybody posting whether it's cleaning products to food and it's all <laughs> magkatabi, <laughs> diba? but, but it's also interesting because then you can sift through it and then you also uh, see what's keeping the market interested and also the concerns of people. People, you know, put their, put their worries there. They put inspirational messages there and it's actually become actually my hair standing because parang people because they cannot hug each other or they cannot see each other the communication has become so much more intense whether it's um sharing new food with each other or even just kind of being supportive online which i think is um it, it's these are the, the good things that have come out of this lockdown uh -oh. Now, question. How about ano naman? How did the Bacolod cuisine um, ano, are, are doing during this pandemic? We're enjoying kasi like uh, we had a uh, Frenzy City, yung Bossa Nova girl. They're selling ano, chorizo, yung hubad na chorizo from Bacolod. So, yes. any, uh, how's the Bacolod food uh, during well, this Well, you know, um, I, I, I mean, I kind of like have a, a, a direct... Um, connection with how to get my produce in right my mm -hmm. um the lechon that i used to serve at grace park used to be flown in from bacolod three times a week and now we can't get it in because the flights uh -huh. are erratic um sometimes there's flights for people and then it, it dies and then they, they stop it 
And then cargo for like three days was was okay. And then nawala. So my kadios, my batuan, <laughs> um, other ingredients. I was able to get some salt in last week. And then all of a sudden, hindi na pwede. So I think Roro is another way to get the food into Manila. But um, I think that it's also super erratic pa. Um, you know, even um, with with getting produce into Manila. Um, it's a pity. And I think that it's, I'm sure it's the same for all other provinces. Di ba? Na parang you can fly today, pero baka bukas wala nang fly. <laughs> My sister-in-law actually works. She has um. They have um, like uh, an agritourism um operation in Davao. And my oldest nephew, the son of my brother and my sister-in-law, he he started you know this little. I mean, well, they're they're going into they pre-COVID they were going into hydroponic farming. Mm -hmm. So during the lockdown, he, he and his mother got stuck in Davao. It took them. Oh. They, yeah, they only came back to Manila two weeks ago. And wow. then um, it was so hard for them to get a flight. Of course, they had to wear PPEs coming in. So mm -hmm. I think traveling around the Philippines is still very erratic. Mm -hmm. um, they'll say the, the airport's opening tomorrow, and then there'll be a few flights, and then you don't know. And after a few days, wala <laughs> <laughs> so, Business-wise, like for me, sourcing from Bacolod, I have to kind of like put that aside muna. Okay. I'm just happy that there are some markets in 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 Metro Manila that mm -hmm. get some okay. um, ingredients that are like the ones from Negros. I don't know if maybe there's but one growing in Luzon as well in some parts, maybe in uh, or whatever. Because sometimes in Guadalupe market you can find it. Um, uh, but one and even Cadios. So I don't know. It, maybe it's coming from the north, we, it, which is quite interesting also to, to be learning, no? Pala ko, endemic sa Negros lang pala. Maybe it's also growing in some other parts of uh, of the Philippines. Uh oh All right. Before we continue, let's say hi lang naman nagko-comment. Aris watching from Batanga City. Hi, Aris! And then Hera from the UK. Uh, oh my God, the UK. What time is it there? Ah, you just woke up. <laughs> <laughs> and then Eric D says hi. All right. Hey, hi, Eric. Eric. <laughs> so question, uh, next question. What do you think? Uh, I know you do catering, diba? And there are a lot of celebrations, a lot of cancel events. What happened in this space already? And what do you think will happen next? Well, you know, the, the catering part of the business, for me, I think, is what's taking the biggest hit. Because, syempre, people can't get together, no? But I'm happy to say that in the last two weeks, um, especially after dine-in, you know, was allowed already, People are um, starting to engage our services, but super limited, like in their homes for 10 people. I have a couple who got married. They were only 18, you know, a super immediate family. And of course, it was in a big part of their house. So they were like super socially distanced. We have to also be very careful to follow the the rules of the IATF and the DTI. Um because we, we realize, you know, especially with all of a sudden this new surge of, of the infections, now it's we really have to be very careful. Um, so we have new protocols for our staff with regards to you know how what they wear, especially the way the the food travels and the way the food is served. So we're I'm lucky that we've had clothes in our inventory from, from big catering events before. So food covers, talagang, we bring them with us now. Even if you're only eight people, we make sure that every time we serve you something, may take. Um, buffets, we actually, bu buffet type of setups, we actually discourage unless people are very insistent if it's just for like their immediate family. Mm -hmm. Wow, okay. And... Uh all our staff um, COVID tested before we allow them to service in anybody's home. 
Wow, that's good. That's yeah, good. Right now, I mean, it's an investment that we need to make, and uh, those are the new costs that uh, everybody has to shoulder, diba? Right? But it's a must. We um, we we have to put our money where our mouth is, and we have to make our clients feel that they're safe and secure when they come and either dine with us or when they ask us to cook in their homes. So, question: uh, does, uh, Do you include the safety cost into the pricing, or you the company uh, yeah. we, all of it? I, when we when we quote them, the, those costs are already included, and they realize now. For example, it's like um, in the restaurant. Um, apparently, we, with IIDF, you're discouraged to use service water, so we have to use bottled water. And they pre I, I think the clients appreciate it, even if they have to spend a little bit more, but at least they know that they are safe. Mm, nice. What do you think the man of ano, the DIY kits or you uh, map uh, well, trays? What do you think? Uh would that I think be they're fun and they're interesting, and um especially when they're done by somebody like Josh Baldwood, and you get a, a you know. Um, yeah, <laughs> a food kit from from Test Kitchen. It's like, oh my God, you don't really have to do much, right? And <laughs> I think that it's interesting. Um, even for for us in 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 my catering business, we're really expanding our bottled sauces, our packaged fresh pasta, because then it, it's the wave of the future. Um, food packaging is inevitably the the way that you have to go. So, um. Even with food delivery lang and uh, food orders, you know, from the restaurants and from, from our catering business, mm -hmm. if, you know, if your packaging is not done well, then sayang naman, the food doesn't travel well. Then you have to also be very careful about doneness so that it doesn't get overcooked by the time they heat it up at home. It's a mm -hmm. totally, totally new ball game. But it's also enhanced the business, you know. That that that's again another blessing from COVID. Oh nga, ang galing nga. So next question, naman. How about what do you think of this cloud eats? Because you are practically doing it with catering and doing other stuff under yeah, the catering. Yeah, kind of like you know you integrate the kitchens, de ba? Mm -hmm. Um, you know when when uh, right after COVID, it took us maybe two weeks to get Chibo up and running. And um, our commissary is in Cubao, in in uh, in Ali Mall, and um, you know we were at first doing deliveries out of that location long because it's an operating kitchen, the the, the commissary, uh, and um, we decided we would only operate one kitchen in the north, and then another kitchen to service the south. So what we did was because our store in SM Aura has an outside um, entrance, uh, we figured that would be the best location to service Makati going south, no? Um, mm -hmm. To have um, our commissary be the one to take care of um, the the north, the northern market. And um, yun nga, naging cloud kitchen yung commissary namin, and at the same time, Aura also became the cloud kitchen for everybody in the area and then um at the same time even before luso and grace park was allowed to do dine-in we were doing takeout and of course the commissary was still making sure that whatever um raw mats they needed um and and whatever you know stuff that needed to be done in the commissary the commissary was doing so even oh. potato chips for chibo where you know that's that's been taken care of it's a commissary based operation oh and parang dumadami rin yung cloud kitchen lang talaga na operations no which is another oh, competition people integrate you know i mean if we, because in the end the the cost to operate one kitchen is is already so steep and if you can service different brands out of one operation why not diba and um, also, it's also um, a, a good way to to keep your operation tight. Um, deliveries are also integrated, and uh, uh, to, to to be able to deal with the challenges of COVID, lalo na the transportation for the staff and all of that. 
you know, th that's actually the biggest challenge that's disallowing us from operating um, the way we used to pre-COVID. Um, mm -hmm. People are still having a hard time getting to work. So um, what we do is we we um, shuttle our employees and they take turns, no? So para everybody has a chance to work. Oh, right. No, thanks for that. Now, next question. Um, fine dining. So some people say that fine dining will be the first one to bounce back kasi nga, it's exclusive. But some people say it's a death of fine dining. What do you think? Di naman, Def. Wag naman. So the in fine dining, actually, it's easier to um, achieve the social distancing that the, that the government is requiring because you know, you can spread it out, although it'll, of course, affect your the amount of sales that you get. But um, people feel safer, you know. Like at Luso, you know, we only have, um, actually, on pre-COVID, you can see 22 people inside. So now we're only doing nine, max, maximum. So just imagine... But at least people are socially distanced and they can still have their their champagne. Well, uh, uh, we don't know next week, baka hindi na sa Makati, they're going to... Wala na, na, wala na raw eh. No, yeah. starting July 14, I think. That's the news that we heard. Oh, <laughs> Ipapa-weekend muna kayo. <laughs> yeah. So, well, so you is know... That, is that sustainable? Still the priority. Is, well, is that sustainable? Yeah. Uh, sustainable, um, maybe for us to break even for now so that we don't have to close shop. But mm -hmm. uh, moving forward, we're hoping that when when things get better, that you know we can we can th that they can relax the the rules a little bit. But I can understand why they would um, curtail people. Um, you know, enjoying alcohol because then it, it encourages them to to stay longer and to to kind of you know interact with each other longer. So um it's masakit, but we have to, you know, think of people's safety first, I think for now. Uh oh. And so that means I guess there's no more bars, no, I guess moving forward. Well, you know, this whole thing with the with with the bars, I think that, you know, um Maybe people shouldn't have been a little bit too too um, forthright with with uh, you know with DJing and, and all of that a little bit early on. No, uh -huh. I think that we're still supposed to be being careful and and uh, not uh, partying in public. So uh, I mean. It's understandable, and and um, if if we look at the slight spike in infections, it could be because maybe we relaxed a little bit too soon, no? So mm -hmm. let's uh, no, let's be prudent and and uh, wear masks all the time. Um, with the spike in infection, do you think uh, the industry can afford another like lockdown? <laughs> I think that it's going to be tough to go back to just delivery yeah. and takeaway. Um, uh, I think that um, siguro as long as we we follow the rules and um, keep it down to the 30% that's allowed and, and really be strict about it with the social distancing at the restaurant as well as the safety protocols, sanitizing the cutlery, the, you know, the, the plates, etc. I think that... Um, I hope, I hope that we can maintain what they've already um, allowed us to do at the moment. Mm -mm. That's good. Um, and what, what can we learn from the other countries? I know you have friends from Hong Kong and Vietnam or other Southeast Asia or around the world. Is there anything that we can learn and implement so that we can make it stronger, the uh, industry? Well, I think it's, it's just kind of... Um, uh, really being more conscious of uh, of following the rules, no? Because as you can see, like for example, in in uh, in Singapore, they they you know they're they're back to allowing people at restaurants, but they're also very strict with the way they do it. 
and at, at the same time, you know, the medical care there. Um, I think that the the people that have gotten cured from the virus is um, the percentage is also much higher. Um, I think that we just have to not let our guard down um, with regards to you know um, going out unnecessarily and um, just just really being careful. Siguro with the the strictness, because we we Filipinos were a little bit you know too much of a happy. Happy population, <laughs> di ba? So um, when 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 we were allowed a little bit, you know, naman how we are. So we we okay. have to just kind of you know restrain ourselves a little so that we can actually overcome it and then you know um, get better later. Oh. Yes. Oh, parang nga tayong di ba mga Brazil na mga happy people. <laughs> Pero hindi naman yun ah. The uh, president there really just didn't think that they should be annoyed. <laughs> they should, that they should oh, be so that's a little different. At least here, we you know we're kind of strict with regards to to the with the with the government you know not allowing us to to do oh. certain things. Um, what happened to the, your Kabao market, naman? Kamusta naman? How's the supply chain? How's the farmers? Oh, okay. uh, farmers, the, the market is also regulated with how many people are allowed to enter and be there at one at one time. Um, the malls also took a little bit longer than other other malls in in Metro Manila to reopen um, mm-hmm. because they realized the the kind of volume of you know, people going through that that whole interchange in 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 Araneta Center in Cubao, no. But mm. uh, now it's okay. There, there, the malls are 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 back up, but uh, the protocols are also very strict with regards to you know getting your temperature tested, the sanitation, etc. And mm-hmm. um, well, with, with with the with the MRT, it's also regulated, so. Um, medyo less foot traffic lang in the center. Pero the traffic, traffic is back. The traffic is back in the area. But I'm okay. happy that, you know, the flower market is active and people are uh, selling plants and flowers. And uh, it's, it's, a, it's a happy place again. That's good. Uh, we have a question from Pam, chocolate maker Pam. Uy, hi! Hi, dear. Hi, Chef Gaita. You look so fresh. Oh, my gosh. Thank you. <laughs> Among your products, what are your top three lockdown bestsellers? Any surprise bestseller that emerged? Oh, my gosh. Well, I'll, I'll just address this with regards to the food that I'm cooking at home, okay? I'm very surprised that my paksiona bangus belly with tuba vinegar is my bestseller. <laughs> Wow. I mean, I think people people are looking for home cooked food, so that that's my bestseller. That the cassava with a with a twenty four month parmigiano is also a bestseller, and um, very recently one of my Lola's recipes. Um, of course, I had to make paalam with my family. Can I please, you know, offer this for sale so everybody, or other people can enjoy it? Is my is my ano chicken made with butter and Vienna sausage. So it's a super comfort food dish. Oh. People really, really love it because it's so simple and it's kind of heartwarming. And it's ano, the lata the lata gourmet, di ba? Which I uh, think people appreciate at the moment. <laughs> okay, and uh related to the fresh question, how do you keep yourself I know motivated, and I know that the industry is very affected. No, uh, there's a lot of uh, mental stress. Um, any advice also to that? And first, how do you keep yourself, and then how? What's your advice? You know what? Um, I think that um, a, a fitness regime is is a regiment is really, really, really important. Um, although it's hard for people to exercise, you know, in the confines of their home. I'm very lucky because I I used I have a personal trainer who I've been training with maybe for the last 16 years, and he decided to do classes on WhatsApp, individual one-on-ones. No, because I have a one-on-one um, 
appointment with him um, five, five, six days a week, actually. And we wow. decided to do it on WhatsApp so I don't have to leave the house. So it's an appointment call. I use my phone and um, we do our workout for an hour max. And um, I'm very happy that I've maintained it because I actually put on a lot of weight in the last maybe, what, three years. And after the lockdown, he and I have been working out very consistently. And then I also eat. Um, I, I'm trying to do ano, intermittent fasting. So only one meal. One, oh my God. One, one big meal and one small one a day. <laughs> so I lost actually 12 and a half pounds since COVID started. So wow, that's nice. Because I was so tabana eh, before this whole uh, thing. So now I'm happy. Nice. I, I, have, I have more clothes to wear now because I dropped a little bit of you know, of uh, of uh, poundage <laughs> from around the midsection. <laughs> and uh, so what do you think of uh, this uh, no, mental stress with a lot of the chefs uh, or the food industry? Um, is there anything um, that uh, the industry is doing to address it? I think that the, the way that we're all coping with this is it's so nice that we're all super in touch with each other. Then, you know, we share information, we share support. Um, in our groups, we can rant about certain things, but we also um, try to find solutions, you know, that help each other. When, um, when there are gray areas, let's say from the rules from government, um, we, we kind of like, you know, try to be a step ahead. And then when, when that works for, for us individually, we share the information with each other. And um, I think that's what COVID has done for everybody now. It's, it's really um, forced us, you know, whether on a personal level or on a professional level, to really look to each other for support. And um, I think that... Um, it, it's also made everything so much more real and so much more um, kind of um, or, it's developed that sense of community, you know, that maybe it was lacking. And that's why they're saying that, you know, when the, when that big eclipse happened, diba, I was reading, I, I love mm -hmm. reading about astrology and all of that. Na parang, our world is going to change, right? And it has changed. We're yes. now, putting more emphasis on what's important. It's yes. also allowed us to reboot all our lives. Um, mm -hmm. I actually now don't want to go out of the house. <laughs> I used to be such a, no, I mean, I used to be very gala. I used to always, you know, um, wake up early, sleep late, but I was always out. But now uh -oh. I, I'm, I, I like, I find my, my home is an oasis. I love just hanging out with my cats and um, every chance to go out, whether it is to do some work or whatever, it's actually more meaningful and you get more more stuff done. And, you know, mm -hmm. I, I've never had so many meetings with my staff because of Zoom. So, <laughs> so it really helps because you're yeah. confined in a space. Then you're forced to, to really deal with issues. And um, you also make so much more... Um, uh, um, kind of like you're so much more productive with your time. Yeah. No. no so traveling, question. No traveling. So, yeah, traveling. so we we see that you're cooking IG stories. What's uh? Are you doing workshops next or YouTube next or can you share with us your experience of cooking uh in a digital <laughs> plane? Well, yeah. No. Um. Actually, I I've, I've uh, done a few sessions with Chibo to. To kind of like share some videos of our our best selling pasta, for example, and um, actually even for Fifty Best, they did um, uh, a digital cookbook, right? And they asked wow. me to submit a recipe, and I'm I'm kind of like super super at least honored that that my lama dobo represents the Philippines in that collection, and yes. um, it's nice, right? Um, and they, they they gave instructions. It's gotta look home cooked. We don't want you to like have a, a 
such a formal picture. It needs to feel like, you know, you did it out of your house. <laughs> so it's been great. Actually, not just them, but Fidon as well, the, the publisher. They also um, are putting a book together on what people are cooking during lockdown. So I'm, I'm like very excited about that project too. Um, all right. Uh, we'll, we'll uh, I'll just pull up some uh, comments lang. No, Pam said yun nga, uh, Yeah, I'm got hungry. Happy, happy to see you cooking on IG stories. <laughs> yeah. Ayan. So oh, hello. <laughs> <laughs> it's watching. Pio Forest. Hi, Ate Margarita. Hello. Uh. Uh-uh. Hello, Chef Margarita. Long time initial go negosyo days. Hope oh, all wow. oh my God. That's the nice thing, you know. Parang people that are like so much a part of your past, all of a sudden you're all like reaching out with each other oh, on social oh. media, which is so great. Uh-oh. Ito meron pa. Hi, Whoa, ma'am. Gab- where are from? <laughs> <laughs> He's one of our senior staff from Chibo. Ah. Yeah. Nanonood sa iyo, hindi nagtatrabaho. <laughs> Famous yan sa Shangri-La dati. Ah. ah. Favorite ng ano, ng ng customers. Customers. Ah, talaga. Um, kamusta naman ano? Um, so let's uh, wind down the discussion. How's Amano pala? How's uh... Oh, my son, nako. Ayun, he's so shy na not no well not shy, but parang he hesitates to to kind of like, you know, um, have to talk publicly, but they're doing very, very well. You know why? Because they're, for example, their pizza um, is, is really a bestseller. And I think that's what people want to eat diba, during the lockdown. And I think um, also what works for them is their location. Although oh, they're yeah. in, in the mall, but they have a, um, you know, a, a nice drop-off pickup um, accessibility from Lopez Drive. And um, what's interesting also is that they they were able to launch a few new dishes because of COVID, right? Um, uh, a lot more kind of large format dishes, like they're also buko. And, um, and he has like his truffle pizza now, that's his best seller. So it, this is the one thing that COVID has done to us. It's challenged us to really create um, on a on a much um, quicker pace because before we were you know pre COVID it, it the 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 parang the the intent to do new food was not as necessary but now people are always looking for something new to eat because oh. because of the situation so it's forced us to make our creative juices talagang work so for oh. Amano it's been like that for them too. Oh, they're doing very well, huh? at least the yeah, feedback. Sure. I, I'm, very, I'm very proud of my son and his team. So, uh, and uh, I heard that yeah, safety protocols are uh, a bit higher pa from the usual restaurants. Well, yeah, they they. It's also nice to be in Rockwell because they're also very um very what do you call this uh parang talagang they're they they really require all the restaurants to be super strict and um i think that it's important it's really important for for our staff and for ourselves not to not to relax at all during this time because that's what's going to set you apart and what's going to make your customers feel safe about whether it is to order food from you or to come and dine with you um during this very crazy time (laughs) <laughs> All right. Okay. Um, yeah. So well, let's close this. Pero we we'll ha- we have some. Ano lang. So say hi, hi Bledes. Hi Bledes. She's actually <laughs> the the one who's helping me. Well, she's the one who kind of does the operations of Chief. So she's very a very yeah. busy person. Okay, and then. And hi, Mam Gaff from Tam Espiritu. Oh, they all yeah. call me Gaff because that's my internal yeah. initial. That's your initial. Yeah. Mm. Because my mom is Maria, so she's the MAF internally. So they have to make it Gaff. Oh, so they yeah. call me Gaff. Ah. <laughs> oh, that's nice to know. Um, okay, so, 
So let's uh, wind this down. Uh, any final thoughts along to the industry? I know a lot. Uh, one of the main reasons we do this discussion is to inspire people, na, you know, to go ahead and fight maybe to the diners, to the industry, and to your friends. Well, um, to to everyone, um, to my to my colleagues and my and my fellow stakeholders in the restaurant industry, um, whether you're op- operating something huge and or something small, um, I think this is the, the the best time for us to be one, to be united, and to really reach out to each other if we need anything to support each other because. Um, it's it's a challenge that has never hit the industry as hard. Um, I, I'm trying to think back in history. You know, um, what does you know um, made us suffer um, as intensely as this? There's nothing. Whether it was Yolanda, a storm, a storm will, 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 would have closed our operations. Maybe would last maybe for a week or two. But something like this that has been so drawn out since March 15, and you know that has um, kind of put us through a roller a roller coaster. Um, the challenge has never been bigger. So we need to kind of reinvent ourselves and really hold hands virtually, and and really look to each other for support. Um, this is the time to. Um, be super inclusive and to, to, to be super supportive of each other. We're learning from each other. And at the same time, we're also happy that that smaller home cooks have been given an, a nice new opportunity. And it's added a new dimension to our industry. So let's just roll with the punches and and um, stay strong. Um, let's let's uh, keep the faith, let's pray. And at the same time, um, let's just um, support each other through this very, very difficult time. And we know that, you know, um, we'll get through this. All right. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you for having this discussion. Thanks so much Thank for having you. me. Oh, and I'm sure a lot of people will be inspired by these discussions. And, I hope uh, so. Thanks a lot, <laughs> uh, uh, Thank you. All right. So, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. May ano may mga bagong projects ka pa? Hindi, maganda nga eh. Okay, no, it's nice. Actually, parang mas maganda nga. Mas simple. Thanks, Sarah. May mga bagong projects ka ba? Coming soon? O wala? Sina mga doon may bagong brand, di ba? Did you see that? Food trip Manila? O oh, nga, ito nga si Amado ay magpakita. Ay, no, ay, hindi hindi um, bagay sa Amano na na parang comfort food stuff. He started with the steak rice muna. And uh-huh. then, kami naman, it's more the bottled sauces. Tsaka may bakery. Kasi the bakery sells eh. O oh, nga. Uh, so, it was bread, no? It's still in the commissary. Kasi, and we expanded it. We bought a new oven. Mm-hmm. Because breads travel better, di ba? Oh. I mean, it's easier to sell it. So, Ang galing nga, di ba? Parang dati, wala masyadong bread. Ngayon, lahat ng breads, no? Different oh, kinds. Oh, right. People are home, home bakers. <laughs> Tsaka yung mga sardo naging popular. You know? Oh, ganda. Ganda nga. Things are oh. changing. So, yeah. after when the lockdown ends, you know, the, the industry will be so much more interesting. Oo. Ang galing nga eh. Ay, yung mga price points, di ba? Oo, oh, iba-iba. Imagine that Angus Paris is 150 pesos. 150 pesos, the meat, the rice, the soup. Di ba? Oo nga, ang galing nga eh. 150. No, we're actually excited nga. Uh, you know, as a, you know, media covering it. Wow, sabi ko, ang galing nga. Ang galing ng industry. Ah. There's a lot of innovation Super. happening. Yeah. Super. And then yung mga Viber groups na talagang you find all these people. First, it's empanada. Then, yung mga the ones selling produce. Oh. Super interesting. Tsaka it's giving the farmers also a, uh, a new you... way to sell their stuff. Yeah. Imagine we're buying tomatoes, t- sometimes 30 pesos a kilo. 
Talaga? Oh. We need 250 kilos every four times a week. So just imagine, we were able to buy from Baguio through no. Dom. We were able uh -oh. to get gulay through Dom. And then also through, ano, si, um, what's her name? The Filipina farmer, si... Oh, oh. Uh, Apilado. Yes. Oh, oh. <laughs> Apilano. Uh, what's her last name? Hindi ba Atina? Uh, Atilano ba yan? Hindi ko alam. Atilano. <laughs> Oo. Oh, oh. Ang galing. Uh, uh, all right. Thank you. Again, thank you so much. Right. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Gledes. Hi. Uh Oo. -oh. Ayun. Wait. Uh, I-ano lang natin bago tayo mag-ano. Marami nagsasihay eh. Mabel, hello. Mabel. Paolo. Oh, my staff from Chibo. Full support. Oh, my God. <laughs> Hi, folks. <laughs> hello. Come on. Ganda naman ang messages. Oh, my God. Did you see that? Ano so stanza? Ano so stanza? Huh? What's Sutanza? is the corporate name of my catering. Ah. ah. Okay. Yes, there will be a replay. Actually, most people watch on the replay. <laughs> uh, most people watch on the replay. So, we're, oh we're, just, uh, mo, uh, we're just live recording it. Pero marami talaga na. Para you, can, ano, you can stream it again. Oh, uh, they can stream Thank it. Lahat, Thank Sorry you. Sorry, I was too shy to be part of this. Right, yeah. Next time. Next time. Next time. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> ones naman. Silang oh. dalawa ni Raul. Oh, sige. Game. Oh, oh, sige. Game message ko siya. Sige. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Sige, bye. Bye. -bye.